hello everybody and welcome to today's seminar on world-class employee onboarding, a practical solution for your organization. So just to get the introductions out of the way, my name is Kevin Gillespie, I'm Inside Sales Manager at LearnUpon LMS. Um, I've worked on over 350 successful LMS implementations and been named one of the top LMS demonstrators in the world by Talented Learning. My employer, LearnUpon, allows organizations to train employees, partners and customers simply and efficiently at scale. Um, now, I suppose among the awards that LearnUpon has won, probably the most important to us is the 2018 Technology Ireland Company of the Year Award. Considering all the fantastic technology companies and software companies based in Ireland, headquartered in Dublin, that's something we're particularly proud of. And our customer base, um, I suppose some flagship names that you might well recognize, TripAdvisor, Vauxhall, Hillary's, and Intuit QuickBooks, for example. So the reason we've actually chosen onboarding as the theme for today's presentation is that we are actually doubling our own employee base um, within the next 12 months. So naturally, onboarding and best practice is a constant discussion that we're having at the minute. At a team level, I'm also responsible for doubling the size of my own team as well. Um, so it's, again, something that comes up time and time again. So I'd just like to actually kick today off by defining onboarding, essentially. So new hire onboarding is the process of providing employees with the necessary knowledge, resources, tools, and behaviors to become a successful member of your organization. So knowledge, resources, tools, and behaviors. Now that's a ton of information to provide for anyone in a short space of time, and it could easily become overwhelming. So we're gonna help you try and avoid that when we're talking about onboarding today. And I suppose a key question is, what type of information, firstly, do we need to be providing during onboarding? Now naturally, that's gonna be shaped by your own organization's goals, the job role of the individual, and the resources that you have at your disposal. Um, however, there are some common concepts that are considered universally best practice to include in onboarding programs. So that would be things like health and safety, data protection training or GDPR training, um, product or application training, and role specific training. Onboarding in general has seen a movement in recent years from a more manual approach to a more modern approach involving the use of technology. Most organizations today take a blended approach to onboarding um, their new hires. And the reason for that is because onboarding is so diverse. There's so much that needs to be covered that it can be difficult to do with any one method. I suppose the most common methods that you might actually see um, when it comes to onboarding would firstly be informal onboarding. So where a new hire joins an organization, they're given an instruction manual, they sit at their desk and they work their way through it. People offer advice when and if they can essentially. That can work fairly well in small organizations if the individual is a self-starter. If they're not, it can lead to problems. And of course, um, that approach is not consistent, nor is it scalable. We also have the idea of structured face-to-face -face training. Um, and that's very necessary in any growing or sizable organization to allow new hires to get to know their colleagues. Now, that can be quite time and resource consuming and it can be quite difficult to organize as well when you're trying to coordinate multiple calendars. Um, so the most common approach used for onboarding today is actually to deliver onboarding training online using tools like an LMS um, due to its efficiency and its consistency. But one thing we do need to be aware of or do need to be careful of when taking this approach um, is not to make the experience impersonal. That's a common uh, complaint, I suppose, that can be heard about online learning as the people feel they're doing it in isolation or in a vacuum. So in today's session, we're going to specifically be looking at the impact effective new hire onboarding has in your organization, the pivotal role that an LMS can play in that, and the practical steps that your business can take to transform your new hire onboarding process. So let's kick things off with the benefits. And if my clicker wants to move, that'll help us. <laughs> um, so I suppose a few benefits um, that can be associated with good onboarding practice. Um, and I suppose the benefits are twofold that is important to mention. There's the benefit for the employee and the benefit for the organization. But firstly, improved performance can be seen. A study by the Society for Human Resource Management, or as you may well know them, the SRHM, um, showed that 50% newer higher productivity is associated with good onboarding practice, as well as that it can lead to increased retention. So if you ask any sizable or growing company what their key challenges are, one thing you're gonna hear time and time again is hiring. So when you consider that a good onboarding experience can actually help you avoid the costly fallout of high turnover. Um, so the average cost of actually replacing an employee that's recently joined your organization can range from 3,000 to 18,000 pounds in the UK, depending on the industry and role. Um, so according to the Aberdeen Group, actually 69% of employees are more likely to stay if they've experienced good onboarding. And to be more specific again, they're actually more likely to stay three years or more. So when you consider a lot of the job 
job seekers today or people that might be joining your organization are millennials, then that's going to be very significant because we all know that millennials don't like to stay in any one place for too long. Now, we also um, can see improvements in engagement with good onboarding. Um, so I'd like to define engagement there as how motivated employees are to contribute towards your organizational success. So 54% uh, higher employee engagement, um, as well as that there's a shorter learning curve um, for a new hire where they've had a good and formal onboarding process. So when a new hire joins your organization, it actually take, typically takes them eight months to reach full proficiency. You can cut that down significantly with a good onboarding process. That isn't to say a short onboarding process. Actually, a report by Urban Bound shows that 34% faster full proficiency is achieved with longer onboarding programs than with shorter ones. And finally, it's going to increase the likelihood of the individual reaching their goals within your organization. So again, an Urban Bound study showed that 77% of employees reach their first performance goals where there is a formal onboarding process in place. That likelihood actually drops to 49% where there is not. So clearly onboarding should be an absolute no-brainer for all of us, um, but how do we actually go about building an effective onboarding process? So we'll take a look at our plan. So the first thing we're going to need to do is firstly identify our onboarding goals. Now it's very essential that you have concrete goals, sorry, and this should include, but not be limited to, setting expectations for the learner themselves, outlining the skills that your new hire will gain by going through the onboarding process, and establishing a clear culture or code of conduct for the new hire. So by way of example, in my role, I train sales reps. My goal with onboarding is that after 90 days of onboarding, a new sales rep should be able to deliver a consultative sales demo to a prospective client that, respect, or that reflects Learn Upon's business practices, style, and values. We then need to assemble our onboarding team, so we need to decide who's involved. For a lot of organizations, this is determined by the company's size. In some, it's purely L&D or HR-led, for example. In other smaller organizations, it can be purely the manager and the report that's involved in the onboarding. But actually, the most impactful or effective approach is a collaborative approach to onboarding, so involving HR, L&D, managers, and indeed coworkers. Now, that can be quite difficult to set up and to track, so you could well make good use of software, things like project management tools, to allow you to assign and track tasks, tools like Trello or Asana. But we will actually spend a bit more time on tools in the next slide specifically. Now, we're also going to want to document the steps that new hires need to complete to achieve their onboarding goals. So the simplest and the most effective way to map this is by creating learning goals or, or learning steps, essentially. So in the ebook that today's presentation is based on that I'll give you more information about a little bit later on, we actually provide you with an example framework for how you can set up your learning goals. And just by way of example, an initial step could be something as basic as meeting the rest of the team. It could be getting set up on a workplace app like Skype or Slack. It doesn't matter how long each of your steps actually take. Some might take minutes, some might take weeks. What matters is that the new hire can see how that contributes towards their overall goal and their overall job role or performance. Now, the most daunting part of any onboarding program tends to be the content creation itself, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. When we're creating content for onboarding, um, we follow the same advice that we give to our customers when developing any kind of training to put your audience first. So put yourself in the new hire shoes or ask yourself a few simple questions. Like what is it that the, the new hire needs to know? What's their current level of knowledge? Or what do they need to be able to show or demonstrate at the end of this process that they can't actually do today? From there, go and engage your subject experts and draw the appropriate information from them. But most importantly, when it comes to content, do not front load or overload your learner. That is actually the most common mistake in any onboarding practice. You know, a new hire joins, they get a booklet, 200 pages, everything they could ever possibly want to know about the organization. Well done, you've created a great resource, but no one can actually digest that amount of information in such a short space of time. So apply learning theory with your content. Make sure that your content is released in small, manageable chunks, and always take the opportunity to solicit feedback. And the final step in building out your onboarding plan is to know your KPIs and how you're going to measure them. Um, so this might well seem obvious, but it's actually a step that a lot of businesses tend to skip. So uh, without this step, you're never going to know whether your program was a success or not, or what stages of that process you actually need to reiterate. Um, so common examples of KPIs would be things like ROI, or return on investment, or time versus effort. Now, I mentioned using the right tools and the right technology a little bit earlier. Um, so it's important that I suppose to think of the tools you're going to need, and there's a variety of top-notch top ones out there. Some can be used alone or in isolation, whereas others work better as part of an onboarding suite or ecosystem. So you'll see a few examples of these tools listed here 
on your right-hand side. Um, at the heart of everything, we've got the LMS for delivering online or blended training. And I'm going to dive into some of the workflows that any LMS should allow you to use to simplify and scale your onboarding program very shortly. We've also got our HR system, which of course is going to be a core tool um, in this ecosystem. Um, so this will allow you to know what resources you have at your disposal, um, what level of knowledge they have, and how best to engage them. It's best to select a tool that can integrate with your LMS or to select an LMS that can best integrate with your HRIS system so that you can automate as much of that process as possible to help make it scalable. Now, I mentioned earlier things like project management software, things like Slack or, or Teamwork, for example, or, or, or Trello. Um, messaging software is also quite important and one that people tend to leave out. Um, so it'll allow you to interact with the learner about their onboarding, where they most commonly hang out or exist. Um, so you can actually create appropriate groups and channels for them. They'll have access to historic chats that may be of interest and be able to ask questions, most importantly, on public channels to, to wider members of the team that they might not usually interact with otherwise. Now, not every tool here is going to be necessary. Um, it's, it's about what, knowing, knowing what's right for your organization. I suppose as some quite high-level advice, um, we encourage you to, I suppose, build your toolkit quite slowly. So start off with the core applications or tools that you need, your HR system and your LMS, and build from there. There's no point in bringing in seven different tools just because they're listed here or you've read it somewhere. Go for the best and breed solutions and make sure that they can speak to one another. Um, again, we provide you with a framework of how to select the appropriate software for your specific program um, in the ebook that today's presentation is based on. Now, when it comes to actually creating a successful onboarding program with your LMS, it should be easy and efficient to manage and deliver that onboarding training. So some of the workflows that will actually help you achieve this um, will be adding new hires automatically or in batch to your LMS. So we mentioned integration with our HR system earlier. Obviously, that's the ideal scenario. A new hire is added into your HR system. They're automatically created in your LMS, for example, by, a by API. Now, if your systems don't currently speak to each other, your LMS should at a minimum allow you to batch upload users using something like a CSV and a list of email addresses, for example. And the idea is that that's going to cut down on manual recurring tasks. We should also look to automate enrollment in courses where possible. Again, that could be via API if your systems speak to each other. Or alternatively, you could set up workflows in your LMS or your LXP, for example, such as auto-assign rules that you determine. So an example of such a rule might be that when any new user comes into your platform for the first time, they automatically join a new hires group, and they've got a course release welcoming to the company or the organization. You could also use custom user data quite effectively in this as well, such as their job role, for example, or the project that they're working on to help determine um, other mandatory or even optional or elective content that they should have access to. You should also leverage your due dates or valid periods. So that will actually help you keep your plan on track. And this should be coupled with automated reminders as well. Now, a good LMS will allow you to specify the frequency of those reminders and the language used at an individual course level. So for example, on your InfoSec training um, course enrollment, uh, email or template, you might not want that language to be quite formal, whereas with your cultural training, you might want that to be quite friendly or informal, for example. Now, if a lot of your, your uh, I suppose, onboarding training also follows the same framework, you should be able to copy or clone your courses so that you're not inputting that information from scratch every single time. Grouping learners can be very useful for giving them access to the appropriate role-specific training, be that mandatory or even optional. It will also allow them to interact with other members of their teams via things like forums. You could even take that a step further if you have a cohort of new hires starting at the same time and use things like leaderboards or badges, for example, to incentivize your learners when it comes to their onboarding. You can, of course, assign different roles in your LMS um, to the key stakeholders to help create, monitor, and track that onboarding training and set any number of granular permissions that make sense as well, such as admins, managers, and instructors. And finally, you're obviously going to want to be able to generate reports um, that measure the KPIs we had mentioned earlier. And a good LMS will actually allow you to do this at an individual level or have a more holistic view of things. So at the individual level, you might want to dig in and see where a particular new hire is struggling or what they need some help on. Whereas I suppose at a wider level, you might want to see you know, what parts of the process could be reiterated. Where do people commonly get stuck, for example? Then a good report and suite that will allow you to do that. Um, you should also be able to schedule those reports to auto-generate as well. So let's say you have a stakeholder like a content creator involved in the process. You might well place a survey in your onboarding course 
and have weekly feedback go to them to help inform future iterations of your content. That reiteration is going to be so important when it comes to building an effective program. Other features not mentioned here, but certainly worth being part of the discussion, would be things like forums or assignments to help promote collaboration. And again, reduce that idea of learner isolation or that feeling that they're doing things in a vacuum. You could also use things like learning paths, announcements, or instructor messaging. And any features not mentioned there that anyone is interested in seeing and how they might help with an onboarding process, uh, we'll be at stand 37 uh, a little bit later on and, and happy to, to demonstrate those. But I suppose in terms of putting the best onboarding experience together for your employees, the onboarding experience itself, that encapsulates all aspects of onboarding. And there's so many variables that can either positively or negatively impact the new hire's experience from the training material used to the software being used to things like accessibility. So it's important to create a program that's user-friendly, engaging, and removes any barriers to success. Or as we say here, that's smooth, straightforward, and accomplishable. Now, what we've learned from our own customers that have put together very effective onboarding programs is that Engaging course content plus the correct deployment of LMS features can lead to a very robust training process or onboarding process and in turn motivated employees. The most important things we've learned from our customers that we surveyed around their onboarding practices are actually that great onboarding should be easily accessible, learner friendly, engaging and enable feedback. And I'm just going to provide a few quick examples of each of those as well. So accessibility actually tends to be one of the biggest barriers to any types of training, really, not specific to onboarding. Um, so you're going to want to remove any friction and any barriers to success and make that access as seamless as possible. So you can do this by using things like single sign-on, for example, from an employee portal, intranet, a G Suite, Active Directory, for example, to allow them to get into the portal with just one click, not having to log in again or remember multiple passwords, for example. The learner's also going to need to know what they need to do and, and the importance of that. So things like your, your customizable notifications are going to be very important there as well and communicate an important information like the due dates, the learning objectives for the course, for example. And the beauty of using a tool like an LMS or an LXP is that it should allow you to set this up once and reuse it constantly. So helping to make your program scalable. Um, better yet, you could actually pair those two features together. Like a good system will actually allow you to include something called a launch URL in your email templates so that the learner can actually launch their onboarding course directly from the notification itself with one click. And of course, it's going to need to be mobile friendly. So you want the learner to be able to access training when it's convenient for them. Um, so that could well be on their hour long commute, for example, coming in into your office. So it's important to, I suppose, remember that the systems that you're going to be using need to be responsive, as does the content itself. Now, it also needs to be learner friendly, the program that you're putting together. So when selecting any piece of software that you're going to use for onboarding, intuitive sh intuitiveness sorry, should be a key consideration. Your new hire should never need any training on how to use the training system itself. And a few key features that might help there would be things like a clean and simple dashboard, for example. It should be very apparent to them how they can start to resume their onboarding training with one click directly from that interface. You could also use learning paths to help structure those many goals or steps that we've mentioned a little bit earlier and not to overwhelm your learners. So it might be that they complete an initial step today. That triggers an enrollment in the next step in that process, for example. And you can also mix it up between mandatory onboarding training and optional or elective content just to give a variety to your end user themselves. Now, a good system will allow you to base the content that a learner will see on their persona, things like their job role. And that just doesn't apply to mandatory training, but also to the optional or elective training. So let's say someone starts in your accounts team. When they access their optional or elective training catalog, they shouldn't see training that isn't relevant to them. That immediately disengages them. So it has to be a tailored experience for the end user to allow you to actually go ahead and maximize engagement. So a very interesting study that we conducted last year showed that across a variety of organizations using a variety of LMSs, 72% of them cited engagement to be the key challenge when delivering online training. And that's no different for onboarding training. So to overcome this in your onboarding, um, you should actually use a two-pronged approach. So dynamic course content and gamification. So course content, firstly, should pique the interest and be rewarding to the learner to complete. So obviously, creating engaging content um, can be a challenge in its own right, but the reward is certainly there. So you should use your LMS to offer a variety of content types to your end user. So they're not getting bored at any point. That could be video, it could be webinars, reading material, for example. Break that up with things like knowledge checks, surveys, assignments, exams, to help keep them engaged as they work through their onboarding training as well. Invite discussion using things like forums, or even set up scenario-based learning or branching and things like SCORM or XAPI files, for example. 
you can also then um, use gamification mechanisms like badges, points, or levels even um, to help keep your learner motivated as they work their way, especially through a longer onboarding program. And you should be able to customize this experience so it's unique to your organization. One of the things I often say about gamification is one of my favorite ever uses of it is an organization I work with, they have a lot of Star Wars fans in their office, so their gamification levels for new hires as they work through things are Youngling, Padawan, Jedi Knight, and Jedi Master, for anyone that's familiar with Star Wars terminology. But if engagement, uh, I suppose, not just onboarding related, I suppose, and training um, is a challenge for anyone here today, we do have an additional ebook on that as well, and a lot of best practice to share. Again, we'll be at stand 37 and happy to share that at any time. And the, the last part of that is always to solicit or enable feedback where you possibly can. So onboarding should never ever be a one-way street. Soliciting feedback will actually help your new hire feel more valued and involved. So again, limiting that idea of learner isolation, which can be a challenge when delivering training online. Um, so you should encourage reflection, opinions, and a two-way conversation to help keep the employee interested. And you might use features like forums, surveys, comments, or ratings to allow you to do that. Now, you should take this feedback and use it to constantly improve your onboarding program. So if anyone here is familiar with the concept of marginal gains, it's looking at a large process and dissecting that step by step, trying to improve every minor step for the overall betterment of the program. And that's something we've seen work incredibly well with onboarding programs. A good LMS should allow you to make those slight tweaks or changes very easily um, with things like good version control. So, in conclusion, what we sort of learned from our customers is that world-class onboarding is an incremental and iterative process. Um, we've also found that uh, building great employee onboarding programs should always start with a plan, develop a strategy, and invest in the right tools or solutions. And again, those tools or solutions might be different for every organization sitting here today. At LearnUpon, our most successful customers work this way. They have a clear picture of their business's overall onboarding process and what that should look like, and they build from there. They focus on getting every single step right and reiterating that time and time again. And that's what allows them to create successful programs in the long run. So that's pretty much, I suppose, what we'd intended to run through today. Um, as I mentioned, this is based on an ebook, um, building an employee onboarding program. That ebook is available on learnupon.com forward slash blog, or happy to share it with anyone directly um, here today as well. Again, we'll be on stand 37 afterwards. But I think we might have a minute or two left if there are any questions maybe that I can help anyone with. So the question there was that uh, writing the content can often be a tricky uh, part of that. What specifically is tricky about writing the content? It's making it engaging for everyone. I suppose the most common complaint about any kind of training, not just onboarding, is that it's boring uh, and that it's clunky, essentially. So that's where you're going to want to leverage things like scenario-based learning or even gamify your learning to help keep your learner motivated as they go through it. A lot of the time, it feels like they're taking that in isolation. It's impersonal. So again, soliciting feedback as you go along, allowing them to collaborate where their training is concerned is also very important, and to share ideas or other resources related to that training. And I think... That's all the questions, so thanks everyone for taking the time, and we'll be on stand 37. Thanks.